Since I am mainly looking at video games that may be suitable for people who have never really played video games before, I thought it might be time to look back at the discoveries and moments and more associated with specific games I've played in my life. This is a series I'm calling Gaming Memories. In my previous Gaming Memories episode, episode 7, I talked about my memories with the PlayStation systems, and that I never owned the first PlayStation. Instead, I owned the Nintendo 64. But how did I come to know about the Nintendo 64? How did I get one? And what does the system mean to me, even today? Well, the responses to those questions have to mostly come from trips down memory lane. Prior to playing on the Nintendo 64, the amount of time spent on home consoles, even the Nintendo ones, is mostly limited. I had already played Super Mario World and the Super Mario All-Stars games on the Super Nintendo, the former of which I especially enjoy to be the point of now being considered one of my favourite games of all time. But I don't remember much, if at all, of other games. What did my family and friends rent or buy? I don't even remember if I played Donkey Kong Country before or after the Nintendo 64's release, even though my cousins and I would play it for hours. I remember when spending time with a friend, and I'll come back to what year it was in a bit, he turned on a game that was somewhat different from previous games I've played. Mario Kart 64. We to Mario Kart! This game, everyone, is my first Nintendo 64 game, and it also reminded me of who Mario is, outside of the aforementioned Super Nintendo games and some... DOS game featuring Mario? I had largely forgotten this iconic character. I do remember, however, that I had trouble controlling Mario Kart 64, which I can largely attribute to having been used to using the arrow keys on the keyboard to control racing games on the PC. I must have been like, why aren't the arrow keys working? Or, wait, you had to hold this blue A button to go? Goodness knows what racing games I missed out on my youth. Long on afterwards, I realised I hadn't forgotten the Nintendo 64 controller when going to my cousin's place, on my dad's side, and played split-screen multiplayer in GoldenEye 007. Also, why aren't the Dalek or Aya helping me with this multiplayer footage? Anyways, again, I had trouble with the controls of what was quite possibly my first first-person shooter, at first, with the possible exceptions of the control stick to move and the Z button to fire. By the way, how young was I when I played? Golden Eye. I must have been too young. <clears throat> as much as I remember my first experiences with those games, nothing made more of an impact on me than Diddy Kong Racing and Star Fox 64, also known as Light at Wars. It was at after school care where I had to wait for my parents to pick me up after work, or at hospitals where I sat in front of an Eternal 64 and actually had a good time. I quite simply had fun with both of these games and boldly proclaimed, I want an Eternal 64. <laughs> Well, getting what would be my first gaming console to own under that TV wasn't easy. First of all, what Nintendo 64 was I going to get? How many controllers? Which games? The package that I saw the most was the Twin Controller Pack, which consisted of a black Nintendo 64 with two controllers coloured grey and see-through purple. Glimpsing it behind a local shop window was always tantalising, but it seemed to be one of the more expensive ones. Could I save enough pocket money for it? Could my parents help? Well, I don't remember those specifics, other than I found the same package in another shop that was a little cheaper. I want to guess that it was 187 Australian dollars. I'll let you people in the audience figure out the value of the Australian dollar and in the late 90s. So, I was happy to finally get that system in... What year was it? I look back at my previous Gaming Memories videos and my 30 years almost of gaming series, and I do realise I may have got the years wrong at least a few times. I keep on thinking that I got the Nintendo 64 in late 1997, and all I always looked forward to playing the coming home from each school day in 1998. But I found out Mario Kart 64 seemed to come out in Australia in... January 1998? I'm not sure if that's right. Of course, could I get Mario Kart 64 or even Diddy Kong Racing and Lilac Wars? No. I had to wait for those too. So what happened was that I rented games a lot. The number of memories associated with this would take too long to talk about, but here's some notable ones. Seeing what was unlocked on the cartridge by other players, such as the tracks in Diddy Kong Racing. Being confused about what a 3D platformer was with Banjo-Kazooie. Sorry, Super Mario 64, you came later. Which is, as many will say, a classic even today. Renting the first Mario Mario Party and playing that with people? Figuring out how to insert the expansion pack just to play Donkey Kong 64 and Majora's Mask. The latter being, as you may have seen in my second Gaming Memories video, my first Zelda game, and one of the most important games of my life. There were probably a few other games I played, which honestly may not have been that great. But hey, every console has those. I would get a good sense of what games were good or not through gaming magazines. I got a few of these British import magazines called Nintendo 64 Magazine, or N64 Magazine. In fact, it was due to these magazines that I 
discovered a particularly interesting game, Conker's Bad Fur Day. The magazine's coverage of a game saying that this game came from Rare, wait, Rare as in Banjo-Kazooie and Tui Rare? And that it was above all very rude and mature just intrigued me. I had never heard of a game like this before, so I had to rent it. I'm pretty sure I was shocked by the content back when I played it in 2001, and I actually bought it. It was one of the more expensive games to buy, even back then. Oh, went off tangent a bit there. Long on after starting to rent games, I did get Diddy Kong Racing as my first game. And my collection slowly grew, whether it was the impulsive purchase of Mario Party 2, getting Pokemon Stadium after renting it on the basis of its TV commercial, or getting Mario Tennis after playing it with a friend. I even had to get Majora's Mask and an expansion pack second hand because the Nintendo 64 had essentially gone in the midst of a new generation of gaming. And this is where we come on to the late stages of my Nintendo 64 system's life. As I've gotten older, my interest in retro gaming has grown considerably. I didn't even play, let alone own Super Mario 64, a game that many young people back in the day were wanting to get a Nintendo 64 so badly. Again, I played it for a bit somewhere, and then got a second-hand copy. Then the Wii Virtual Console came along and satisfied my retro gaming needs. I mostly only felt like renting Mario Kart 64, yet got it on the Virtual Console. I even played Paper Mario for more than just for quick rental, and I sometimes look out for actual physical copies of Nintendo 64 games today. Least of all because a number of games, including certain games made by Rare are not available digitally. In fact, where's the Nintendo 64 Mini Nintendo? Regardless of what happens with the Mini, or getting any physical Nintendo 64 games in the future, and this also applies to the Wii U Virtual Console or what could potentially happen with the Switch's online service, the Nintendo 64 can be best described in one word. Nostalgia. Say what you will about the quality of the Nintendo 64's games by contemporary standards, but it's hard to deny that a number of them are classic games that are still worth revisiting. Say what you will about the controller, but the revolutionary control stick and using your right thumb for the right side buttons made for some important 3D games. Say what you will about the quality versus quantity library of games, or the history of a system including its original name, the Ultra 64, but these are things I've only really noticed in recent years, not as a child. As a child, I enjoyed playing the earliest games and seeing commercials for games such as Banjo-Tooie and of course, Super Smash Bros. As a child, I also didn't necessarily pay attention to the console wars until the Nintendo 64's cube-shaped successor came out. This probably shows that the Nintendo 64 just reminds me, and maybe many others, of simpler times. Now, if you excuse me, I'm off to revisit those times and just play some Nintendo 64 game or something. Any excuse to relive one of my gaming memories.